International artist Janet Eckelman is my guest. She turns her intriguing and stunning ideas into public art installations around the globe. Some hang high, some blow steam, and some simply surprise you. Her biggest project to date is a 745-foot aerial sculpture in our city. It's titled Skies Painted with Unnumbered Sparks. And indeed, it will add some spark. How long will it stay here? It's going to be here through Sunday afternoon, March 23rd. What if Mr. Shaw buys it? I would be delighted. Is that possible? Does that happen? It does happen. It does happen. And dare I ask you? <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> dare I ask you? But uh, the piece is designed to travel from city to city as an idea to share. Okay, the team sport aspect. And as you go through mm -hmm. customs mm -hmm. and say, with me, or does it go on the cargo plane? Um, neither. This piece actually packs right up into a box and it goes by truck. Really? It actually is made in this region, the Puget Sound region, it, just over the border in Washington State. I've been working with, for more than a decade with a group of craftsmen and industrial fishnet makers from the fishing industry. And, and I started working with them when I was here in for the Vancouver Winter Olympics, right. with the uh, Richmond mm -hmm. Olympic Oval. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting that you decided one fine day in India that uh, <laughs> fish nets could be more than just catching fish or helping men catch fish or women catch fish. I'm not sure it was a decision. It was just I looked at it and I thought, well, huh. <laughs> well, so much in your life seems to be from the outside, huh, or synchronistic or hmm. kismet. Uh, you have a, a, an installation in Portugal, mm -hmm. in Porto. Yes. Called She Changes. Yes. Tell me about that. Well, that was my first, that was really my first big break. It was the first permanent large urban piece. And uh, it was a dream for me to be able to sculpt at that scale in the city. And where do you begin with something like She Changes? Uh, in the Eckelman studio? In your mind? Well, at that time, the Eckelman studio had one person. <laughs> <I see. laughs> Me. No elves. <laughs> no elves. No elves. Uh, but it's certainly, I had to reach out, as I do with every project, to uh, teams of experts from engineering and landscape architecture and lighting and material science. I didn't have a permanent material when they invited me to do that piece. I had to figure it out. And it, the material is what? That material is, um, I started with, uh, I, I bought a ticket to the Industrial Fabrics Conference and walked the halls row by row, you know, shaking mm -hmm. the hand and asking. I used a fiber that is so permanent, they use it in astronaut spacesuits. It's called polytetrafluoroethylene, and it's 100% UV uh, resistant, and it's here in the Richmond Olympic Oval. Really? And because the color stays bright. And if you go to the Richmond Oval, it's still red and orange, just like mm -hmm. the day we installed mm -hmm. it. And have you had a Kel disaster in any of these? Uh, when you're putting something up, uh, the crane slips. <laughs> Do you know what we I mean? When you're had installing that. massive steel we rings. Have had, we have had many, many surprises. Challenges? I will say. Um, but I try not to think about them. <laughs> <laughs> I understand why. Uh huh. And and how many women in this line of work? I know women sculptors mm. are. Uh, there just aren't as many. Mm. Well, it's not something I think about. Right. Um, I just think about my work, and I think mm -hmm. that when I'm invited to do projects, they're not thinking about my gender. They're thinking about my work. Although. I do think there's an essence to my work that has a nurturing quality, um, the maybe capital F feminine that mm -hmm. both men and women uh, have as a capacity. Sure. I do think there's an aspect of sheltering and protectedness uh, and softness. I really see them as a soft counterpoint to hard edge buildings. I don't know if you ever read any of Jane Jacobs, the, uh, uh, the, the city. life and death, the death and life of great American cities. And yeah. one of her big issues was uh, certainly space where people can communicate and mm. green space. And so you have community within the concrete jungle. And 
art that stimulates and inspires and surprises? I think a lot about the same issues that Jane Jacobs thought about, about scale that is human, like why we like to walk on certain streets where the the scale is human-sized. And actually, Vancouver is a model for the world about how to make tall towers also have a kind of more human scale at the street. And my work helps take these massive urban spaces and bring them down to the human scale through like knotted, soft textile, mm -hmm. something that we all know and understand. I was reading in one of the glossy mags that the new cultural hotspot is in Switzerland, in, in Stad, hmm. in the ski area. Hmm. Maybe that's your next adventure. I've or designed you know? for snow and ice. Okay, so do you have a new direction after this? Oh, I'm working on many projects, and each one is exciting and challenging. The criteria for me to take on a new project is whether it enables me to push my art. If it doesn't, I don't say yes.